I am the youngest of eight children. My late mother and my late father, they were unfortunately unable to care for us properly. That's not a condemnation, that's just a reality of the facts. Due to that, we were removed from the home by the New York City authorities. My name is Silas W. Kelly, and I grew up in Amityville, New York. At the time the authorities came and removed us all, I was the youngest and my next oldest brother, we got put into two separate foster homes. The other six siblings all got put into an orphanage called Hillcrest Home for Boys and Girls. I was placed in Brooklyn. It was a very cruel, abusive, and traumatic experience. Thank goodness the profession of social work picked up on something because eventually they removed me from that home. The woman that I was staying with, she forcefully sat me on the stoop she spun on her heels and she slammed the door. I was three years old, and the first thing that ran through my head was, wow, I must not be worth anything because she sat me out here like somebody sits out the trash. My self-esteem was destroyed. Next thought that came to my head was that this is a cruel, cold, heartless, and inhumane world. Eventually, a cab pulled up. A social worker got out, opened up the back door of the cab, and there was this beautiful, beautiful woman sitting there, and she was my saving grace. She was my new foster mother. On the other side of her, there was another little boy, and he leaned forward. He said to me, you're my little brother, and I'm going to take care of you. And I got reunited at that moment with the youngest of my older eight siblings, and he and I grew up together in that loving home right here in Amityville. She went out of her way as our foster mother to make sure that my brother Paul and I never ever harbored any ill will towards our biological parents, especially our mother. When I was 16, I got caught riding in a stolen car. I had to go to court. My foster father and my foster mother were there and my social worker was there. The judge said, because you have such a strong support system, rather than send you to reform school, I'm gonna sentence you to probation. And that meant a lot to me because maybe I did need a second chance, and I got that. I pay homage to my biological parents because they gave me life, and I pay homage to my foster parents because they made my life. Years later, by this time I'm married, and I'm sitting down talking to my wife, I, I want to get my master's. Where should I get my master's in? And she said, social work. You're a product of the system. You do a lot of volunteer work, and you've worked in the mental health and and in counseling field, I thought about it, I said, that makes perfect sense. So I enrolled at Adelphi University, and in 2014, um, I graduated with my master's in social work. My father-in-law and my mother-in-law are both the co-pastors of the church that I belong to. I've been volunteering for 21 years. I've been married to their daughter for 20 years. So, <laughs> so I started volunteering at the food pantry. They offered me the opportunity to be able to provide um, food to any individuals that I knew that I could identify that were suffering from food insecurity. And I get food from that food pantry and I deliver it to my veterans. I learned in May of last year that I was selected as the 2022 International Rhoda G. Sarnet Award winner for positively uplifting the image of social work in the social work profession. I would have never thought from that little boy sitting on a stoop in Brooklyn that I would be down in Washington, D.C. accepting an award for positively uplifting the profession of social work. The advice I would give to children in foster care today, no matter what happens, believe in yourself. No matter what happens, know that you have value, know that you have worth, but never stop believing in yourself, because at the end of the day, that's all you got.